Grace and I are at the coal mines today and we're visiting what's left of the brick kiln. Now, we're not sure when this was built. Uh, we do know that they started making bricks in Port Arthur in 1836 and the um, bricks were brought to the coal mines from Port Arthur um, after that period. Uh, we know that by there was a boatman on the barge bringing over the bricks and his hat fell in the water and he leaned over to get it and fell in the water and drowned. So we know that, that was around 1840 that they were shipping bricks from Port Arthur to the coal mines. Now this structure is uh, 7 metres at the back by where my rope is here 9 metres. Now we have a little bit of an issue here that at some period um, in the time of this brick kiln is a bulldozer come down this section here and this end of the brick kiln was um, pushed over to here and there's a pile of um, what remains of brick rubble left from the kiln. Now I'm unsure why this had to be the place where the um, bulldozer come through. I have no agricultural experience nor do I have any bulldozing experience. Um, it is what it is, so we'll just play with the cards that we're dealt here. What we can see is the kiln was rectangular shaped by the corners here. Um, and what the experts believe that means it was a scotch kiln. Where you, it was basically a rectangular building that had no roof on it and had doors going down the sides um, where they could fire the kiln. So the doors would have been down the side here somewhere, I expect probably around this location here, looking at um, the diagram I saw of a Scotch kiln at Port Arthur. Um, the first door would have been there and there probably would have been a couple more along there. Uh, the kiln itself, the Scotch kiln at Port Arthur was 25 metres by 10 metres. Now I've got this 7 metres um, wide and with my ropes I said 9 metres but going off the size of that one there I would probably say that this one was a lot longer than 9 metres. They hope to get the kiln temperature up to 1000 degrees but often they only got it to about 800-900 and that would result in poorer bricks as the um, water wasn't removed from the bricks completely. And later on the water would come out of the bricks and cause the bricks to slip. Now, there is brick rubble, as one can expect, everywhere. So it's even very hard here to work out the um, actual height of the um, kiln. Uh, the best we get is in this corner here uh, but I'd say that's only halfway to where the um, original ground was it's just full of um, sand rubble vegetation so we can't get a real idea of the height and if we travel around the back of it we have the same problem here You can see there uh, what may have been the top of it, or may have been it may have gone higher than that. But with all this um, soil here, I can't ascertain as to where um, the base of it was. So we'll leave that to the experts to have an archaeological dig. Hopefully, one day, as they have done a lot of work down at Port Arthur um, in regards to uh, the old brick kiln down there and the surrounding areas so just maybe one day they might get out here now to make bricks we need both water and clay 
and this is on the side of one of two clay pits that are down here. Now this clay pit here I pasted out so it's about a hundred paces long by about 40 paces wide and this is where they would have got the clay from and as for the water as I've said in previous videos here I've never seen any creek beds here wet or dry um, but this little area here has the most water I've seen at the coal mines and it seems to be channeled down from the top of the hill um, up around the main shaft area there seems to be a natural channel that seems to um, bring the runoff from the top of the hill and it, it arrives down here um, particularly when it's wet now you can see here the banks of where they cut back to get the clay and we'll just pop over the other side here as there's a lot more evidence of where they were working where Gracie's are majestically sitting there is just above the top of the bank and you can see here it's almost I wouldn't say it's like they were here yesterday but from the top of that bank there down to here um, I'd probably say it's a good um, two, two and a half metres in height and that seems to be the same all the way along this bank here and up the other side there and as I said before I'm right down in the um, brick kiln end now so it's almost a hundred steps up in the distance there and all this area here where you can see the um, logs and that that was all cleared and extracted um, for the brick, brick, brick building purposes I'm just having a look at the bank here where they would have dug from it's been disturbed a little bit by a, a tree falling down tree root but the soil is so clean I'm not seeing any little pebbles rocks and that that I see in the bricks down at the uh, main settlement which we'll um, have a look at a little bit later in the video we have plenty of evidence here to show us that uh, this area here was used by the farmers after the convicts left as well as uh, miners that leased the um, coal mining area from the government so there's an old container here which I expect would have either held water or stock feed and popping down just here at the edge of the bank of the clay pit is corrugated iron water tank and here is what I'm believing to be the old water pump long long time so at one time I suggest um, there was a lot more water in this area here than there is now what we have here are insulators as they were known and I believe they were even made at Port Arthur um, at the later dates in one of the kilns there but they were attached to the fence posts I don't believe the fence were electric, um, but it was a method of attaching um, this to the fence post and the wire was run um, in the hole there. I see them a lot, um, a little bit closer towards Lime Bay than this side here, but this would have way, way back when the um, civilians are running sheep or cattle here. Now once the um, clay had been dug, um, the convicts used to move it from up in that location up there um, with either wheelbarrows or possibly baskets um, down to somewhere down this area here where it would have been um, combined with water by the um, brick makers. Now in 1841 the coal mines had four lime burners but no brick makers. Uh, but in 1846, there were four brick makers listed on the site. So we can probably say from that 
that this kiln was built around 1845-1846. Previously to that, the um, bricks would have been coming from Port Arthur. So the brick maker would have been over here somewhere where Gracie is laying now. And this is just a artist's impression mock-up. There's nothing here that I see whatsoever to say that there was a drying shed here. But this nice flat area would have been a good location for a drying shed. And in there the brick makers would have mixed the bricks with the clay and water, shaped them, and then stacked them in here to dry. Now I'll just pop up a photo of what a drying shed looks like. But as I said, um, there's no um, record of what the drying shed looked like down here. So once the um, bricks were dried, and that could have taken two or three weeks, depending on the, um, the climate at the time, they were then um, loaded into the um, kiln. And then the kiln would have been um, heated up. I expect they used only timber here. I haven't seen one speck of coal anywhere around here. So um, we would have had convicts here gathering the timber, stacking it up ready to be used here. And then once they got the fires going, I'm not sure of the process of what happened then. I expect there's some doorways or entrances down this end or under that rubble inside here. Um, but the bricks were fired and then they were allowed to cool. Um, that process could take up to a week from what I've read. Now once the um, kilns were cooled, they then had to be transported over to the main settlement, a couple of kilometres away. Um, there's no record of how they done that. They could have either had convicts pulling a cart, or they may have had oxen pulling the cart. Um, anyway, just at the um, southern edge of the um, larger clay pit, there's an old convict road, which we haven't cleared. Um, today for you unfortunately but head up in that direction there and you slowly but surely meet up with the other convict roads that would lead down to the main settlement. Now a brick maker could produce around 120, 125 bricks a day and he'd be working a six day week so with four brick makers down here they were producing around 3,000 bricks a week. Um, now you had to put on top the time of the drying as I said before and the time of the kilning itself so um, putting all that together it did take a long while from the moment the clay was dug to the finalised brick arrived down at the main settlement ready to be used on one of the buildings. Now I've learnt that there's different quality of bricks there's bad bricks okay bricks and good bricks. We're going to um, pop down to the main settlement area and um, have a look at some bricks there and try to um, show you the difference um, between them. The quality of the uh, convict bricks can be determined by their colour apparently. So you've got the light orange colour which is the poorest of the bricks. You've got the brighter orange colour which was a better brick and then you've got the red which is the premium so i believe those colors come about from the um, positioning of where the bricks were in the um, brick kiln when it was being fired now i'm just at the um, back wall of the civilian officers quarters at the main settlement area and we're just having a look here at the um, different bricks it gives us a good snapshot so here you can see a very light colored brick again light then we go to our dark orange, and then we go to our redder bricks um, that are there. Um, the bricks, some of them, they um, seem to be slightly different sizes, and I believe that's from um, how they are positioned, stacked, um, when they're drying or in the kiln. Some of these bricks on this back wall, I believe there's some reconstruction being done um, previously. As you can see there, the mortar is a um, lot brighter colour 
and it doesn't seem to have any of the shells in it that the older mortar um, does. I'm just at the southeastern end of the civilian quarters near the um, separate apartments and there's a wall here that's been uh, worn down quite dramatically and what I think is maybe there was some type of bush tree here and the branches um, as they blew in the wind um, attacked the bricks so to speak but it gives us a good snapshot of how the bricks lasted and you can see here these red ones seem to weather the storm or whatever it was the most then the darker orange more red and the lighter color ones have really worn down now if all these bricks were made here or some were made here and others shipped over from Port Arthur I'm not sure uh, I read it took 15,000 bricks to make a um, stable for a horse so uh, they would have used a hell of a lot more bricks for these buildings here as well as the separate apartments which are over there which was two storey um, if you can imagine 120 rooms similar to the solitary cells two storeys high um, that is quite a lot of bricks I'm behind the Coxvane and Clerks Cottage and here you can see the bricks that are left um, from the fireplaces of the building I think the building itself was um, stone built sandstone but these bricks here would have come from Port Arthur because this building here was constructed around probably 1840 1841 it's showing as being built by at least 1842 anyway so that was before the um, brick, makes, brick makers started working at the coal mines and 90% of these bricks are a light coloured light orange there's few red bricks at all so what I suggest is back then that Port Arthur was sending the dud bricks over here and keeping the good red ones for themselves. At the bottom of the clay pit that's closest to the um, brick kiln there's a modern dam. Um, I expect this water is now stored for um, firefighting purposes but it just shows that the runoff from the hill um, does collect down here at different places and then in the far distance there it heads down to a very marshy area so there always has been a fair bit of water in this little area here along the side of this dam there's lots of brick rubble piles of it um, I'm not sure whether this has somehow been pushed um, up by when they were bulldozing the dam um, it goes all the way along here up here and you can just see piles of it here and it's all just smaller fragments but uh, there's a small depression up there but I couldn't see anything else um, up in there so I don't know whether maybe they had some type of other work area up there uh, that caused um, all this rubble to be caused or it was just part of the um, process of um, building the dam so there you have it the brick kiln at the coal mines within the clay pit I found these two fragments of obviously brick that's been fired but probably half the um, thickness of a normal brick obviously something went wrong there and this one here seems to be flattened out more um, something else maybe they were just trying, trying something I don't know but they are two very irregular shaped um, pieces of brickwork